Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Christopher Goldsmith. Good morning. Honorable ladies and gentlemen of the Congress, I would like to start by thanking you for allowing the IVAW to come together with you to finally fight in a part of American history in the 21st century that we can truly be proud of. All of our stories do not begin on the day that we enlisted. All of our stories begin with childhood. My story begins with this image right here. There's a picture of myself in uniform right after basic training and there's a picture of myself in uniform at about the age of 10 years old with a pair of dog tags and handing my, uh, or showing my Boy Scout salute. I can't say that I was duped into the military by recruiters because that would be an out straight lie. I wanted to be in the military my entire life. It was the only thing I ever planned on doing. And that dream turned into nightmares. I, uh, joined, I, I joined the army to kill people. I joined the army to kill Iraqis, to kill Muslims, to kill, kill people that were of a skin tone other than mine and inhabiting the Middle East. On September 12, 2001, I remember standing up as a 16-year-old boy. I was still in high school when this happened. Standing up the day after September 11th and talking about how we should use biological weapons or chemical weapons over the entire Middle East to make, make it so that the religious land, the holy land, is not an issue that, that harms America. I want to state that I have since changed and I am no longer racist and I am no longer uh, filled with hatred like that. But that is what drove me even harder to join the army and to fight in combat. I joined as a forward observer and was, uh, was trained to use artillery, some of the most destructive weapons that uh, the Army has. Though when I deployed to Iraq in 2005, I um, was not authorized artillery because we had drawn a truce with Muqtada al Sadr, leader of the Mahdi militia, and the uh, prophet to some across all of Iraq especially those in Sadr City. Uh, begin with the first slide, please. I took this photograph, um, as was my job, because I wasn't authorized artillery. That blue Arabic graffiti right there is on the side of a school somewhere in Sadr City. And I didn't know until three days ago when I had a good friend of mine who is Iraqi translated for me. But in 2005, an Iraqi in Sadr City spray painted that and it trans translates directly to welcome America to the second Vietnam. Vietnam and Iraq have not been compared only by members of Iraq veterans against the war and Vietnam veterans against the war. It is being compared to by the very people of Iraq that Americans think are too ignorant to realize what's going on in the world. These are smart educated people that are dying every day. Go to the next slide, please. Underneath the black spray paint is red spray paint. It's written in English, not spelled very well, but obviously from the hand of an Iraqi. And it says, the U.S. and Maliki, or excuse me, the U.S. and Alawi are terror men, meaning terrorists. That is the feeling of the people in Sadr City. They feel they have been let down by America and by their own government that... George Bush's administration put in power. Before I go on, I want to say that I do not blame you as Congress members for not ending the war as many Americans do. I do not blame the President for not ending the war. I blame the people of America and their apathy because they are respons you are responsible to follow what they say. And they have not done a good enough job to convince the rest of your peers mainly Republicans, to fight to bring our troops home and save lives in both America and Iraq. Next slide. Um, the violence was very low due to this uh, ceasefire with Muqtada al-Sadr, so next slide please. So my primary mission, our primary mission was supposed humanitarian aid. Um, humanitarian aid though became trumped by presence patrols. 
Um, this I go into further detail with my written testimony that I've submitted. Um, and presence patrols, what they do is ensure that the, the populace knows that there is an armed and dangerous army or Marines, there's uh, military patrolling their streets every day and that we're not going to let up. Um, it's basically fear tactics, fear tactics to create compliance among civilians. The humanitarian aid that we did was once a week, we would, um, on average once a week or three times a month on Sundays, my platoon would be assigned to escort pump trucks such as these to clear the sewers of Sadr City. And what this really was, next slide please. What this really was, was sucking up a puddle of sewage which would quickly be uh, refilled, often within hours or even minutes just to make it appear in our photographs that we would submit to intelligence, that I would submit to intelligence that would be submitted to those of, those of uh, America's government who control this war, to force them to believe that we are really doing humanitarian aid. But as, uh, as made obvious in the Bechtel report, um, Bechtel's dry run, which was written by Dar Jamal and submitted to the Senate and also the um, Inspector General, uh, the Honorable Joseph E. Schmitz, on April 5th, 2004, the uh, state of the city is in dire need of repair. And in, in an article that uh, by the humanitarian, uh, humanitarian coordinator of the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OSHA, dated 15 April 2008, under uh, water and sewage says the lack of potable water is clear, critical because armored vehicles have torn up the road exposing drinking water pipes drinking water pipes to raw sewage when I was there it was in a horrible state that was three years ago it was bad when Saddam was in control it is now worse than it was in 2005 and in 2005 it was horrific um, next slide please this is a, uh, a young girl's school in Sadr City and what you were looking at is the bathroom because the sewage system was so backed up. Um, the young females, which are some of the most beautiful little girls I've ever seen in my life, would, um, would excrete onto the floor and this was the state of every single school bathroom that I had ever been in. We made no attempts at repair. Um, we were unable to. Um, next, please. This is a school which is flooded. Next, please. That's uh, kids being exposed to massive amounts of sewage. Next, please. That is trash outside of one of the biggest markets in Sadr City. Next, please. That is, next, please. That is sewage right outside of a Red Crescent hospital that we often visited, and we made no attempts, no real attempts to fix the situation. I'm sorry, but I'm running out of time, um, so I'm going to skip to what what effects um, have left, and I'm going to make it very brief. The images you're going to see are vulgar. Flash forward. Flash forward. Next slide. These are the things that haunt American soldiers. This is an image I was forced to take for intelligence reasons. I was told that uh, I was taking this picture to identify this man. No one in the world can identify that man by that photograph. Next slide. I was stop lost. My one hope and dream in the military was to go to college after I went through Iraq. I was stop lost the same week that I was supposed to get out of the army for an 18 month deployment. This man went through the same stop loss as I. He almost lost his right leg and uh, the only reason he didn't, didn't is because in Germany where they were going to cut it off, they messed up his paperwork and flew him home. He's now able to walk. They were going to cut his leg off as a quick fix. And that is what they're doing in the hospitals in Germany to who knows how many hundreds of American veterans. Since I have returned, or excuse me, I attempted suicide. I never deployed a second time. And um, because of that, I received a general discharge. And I lost my college benefits, the $40,000 promised to me in the Montgomery GI Bill I will not be eligible to receive. And um, currently, there's a senator in Congress running for president, 
in the Senate, excuse me, who is fighting to kill our Carl Webb GI Bill. And uh, I'm one of the soldiers who will never get that money. So I would urge you to read my report, distribute it among your peers, as I show very accurately that uh, what's going on in Sadr City is horrific and that veterans are not being taken care of after they return home.